Hey guys, what's not to love about Chicago? Well, plenty of things it turns out. Chicago has a lot going for it, like entertainment and diversity, but you should consider both the good and the bad before heading there. If you're thinking about visiting or moving to the Windy City, you should stick around for my top 10 reasons Chicago sucks. Welcome everyone to Stuck in the Kernfield, where we explore Illinois and the Midwest. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you're returning, thanks for stopping back in. Without you, I'm just talking to myself like a crazy person, so thanks for helping me keep a small part of my sanity. Without further delay, here are my 10 reasons to avoid Chicago. Number 10, education. Only 82.2% of Chicagoans have completed eighth grade, so that means the other 17.8% didn't make it to high school. The national average is 84.3%, while the state average is 86.2%. The school test scores in Chicago are 52% lower than the national average, coming in at only 23%. Ouch. That's a lot of uneducated folks walking around out there. I have a theory. It might have something to do with the fact that Chicago's population is about a quarter of the population of Illinois, but they only have 16% of the schools in the state. And also, the teacher to student ratio is 21 to 1, whereas for the rest of the state it's 18 to 1. There's a lot of room for improvement in the school system in Chicago. Number 9. Weather. The city lies within the typical hot summer, humid continental climate and supposedly experiences four distinct seasons. I personally would argue that they only have two. Summers are hot and humid with frequent heat waves. In a normal summer, temperatures reach at least 90 degrees on as many as 23 days. Winters are cold and snowy. They say spring and autumn are mild short seasons, typically with low humidity. I wouldn't consider them seasons at all. It's more like that one nice week you get each April and September. The rest of the year is either hot as Hades summer or turning into an icicle winter. So that's a lot of fun. Chicago's highest official temperature reading of 105 degrees was recorded on July 24th, 1934. The lowest official temperature of minus 27 degrees was recorded on January 20th, 1985 at O'Hare Airport. Most of the city's rainfall is brought on by thunderstorms averaging 38 a year, and the average snowfall is 37.1 inches. Number 8. Traffic. Chicago has an estimated population of 2.7 million people, so that's a lot of cars on the road. The Illinois Department of Transportation reports that in Cook County for 2019, there were over 32 billion annual vehicle miles of travel. When you break that down to the daily level, it's around 88 million miles traveled in and around Chicago every single day. Depending on the source you look at, Chicago has a round-trip commute of between 52 and 70 minutes, so that's a lot of wasted time for workers. All of that driving makes Chicago dangerous for drivers, passengers, bicyclists, and pedestrians. Cook County typically accounts for around one-third of the fatal accidents in Illinois. In 2019, there were 96 traffic deaths in Chicago, 40 of which were pedestrians. Four of those pedestrians were people waiting at a bus stop just minding their own business when a vehicle went off the road and struck them. I don't understand how that happens on four different occasions. I would think that after the first or second time, the city would figure out how to make bus stops safer. Chicago is trying to do better, though. They recently implemented the Vision Zero program, which is designed to reduce the number of traffic-related fatalities in the city, so we'll see how that does. Number 7. Political Corruption Chicago has a well-known history of machine politics. For those who don't know what that is, a political machine is a group by which a leader or leaders get support from individuals and businesses by giving them rewards for their efforts. This can be money, government positions, etc. The machine's power is based on the ability of the boss or group to get the vote out for their candidates on election day. During the 1880s and 1890s, Chicago was associated with socialist and labor organizations, but then in the 1900s, the city became reliably democratic. The last time a Republican was elected mayor was way back in 1927 when they picked William Thompson. The Democratic Party was led by Richard J. Daley from 1953 until 1976. He first became chairman of the Cook County Democratic Party Central Committee, and then he was elected mayor in 1955. Several members of his administration were charged with corruption. His son, Richard M. Daley, also served as mayor from 1989 to 2011. 
The Younger Daily often received criticism for giving city contracts to friends, family members, and political allies. He had many scandals throughout his time as mayor. He finally left office when his approval rating dropped down to just 35%. The two dailies had the two longest running tenures as mayor. When political corruption in Chicago is discussed, it is always centered around Democrats. However, that's not to say that Republicans didn't also practice machine politics. They had their own machine at the turn of the last century. Their efforts were led by William Lorimer, who was known as the Blonde Boss. Lorimer was a U.S. representative who was elected to the Senate in 1910. At that time, senators were chosen by the state's legislative bodies rather than by winning the popular vote of the people. Two years later, in 1912, it was determined that Lorimer had paid an assemblyman $1,000 to vote for him, and his election was nullified based on corruption and he was removed from his Senate seat. Several researchers have found that there have been over 1,600 corruption convictions in the last 45 years, which helps to give Chicago the title of the most corrupt city in the nation, and it costs at least $500 million each year. Number 6. Pollution. The American Lung Association's 2020 State of the Air report shows Chicago has the 16th highest level of ozone in the air. That's also referred to as smog, which gives it an F in that category. Compared to the previous year, there was an increase of five days of unhealthy days due to the ozone pollution. They say this is a result of vehicle emissions and a rise in temperature attributed to climate change. In the category of particle pollution, also called soot, Chicago was graded at a B. It was also recently reported that Chicago air in July is dirtier than that of Los Angeles, despite having over a million fewer people living in the Windy City. Then there's the water pollution. The drinking water is sourced from Lake Michigan, which has a long history of industrial polluters ruining the water quality. The Illinois EPA says that all 63 miles of coastline test positive for coal distillation and chemical manufacturing waste in levels that exceed the allowable amount. Chicago's tap water has 20 times the amount of chromium that is considered to be a safe level. In addition to all of that, 80% of the water pipes in the city are made out of lead, so the city had to release guidelines on the water, including tips such as let the water run for five minutes and only let the faucet run at a moderate flow before using the water for drinking or cooking. That's terrifying. So if you choose to live in Chicago, you should just use bottled water. Number five, housing. Chicago real estate prices are 29% higher than the Illinois average and 22% higher than the national average. A typical family home will run $225,000 in Chicago. When you look at cities with a similar population, it makes the real estate price inflation more apparent. For example, Houston has 2.2 million people and their average home price is only $140,000. Rental prices in Chicago are 7% higher than the Illinois average. That's $987 versus $925. 56% of households are renters, which is well above average. For comparison, when you look at the state of Illinois, only 34% of people rent. When you look at the national level, the average is only 36.4%. What this tells us is that for the majority of people living in Chicago, home ownership is unattainable. Number four, employment. The median household income in Chicago is 9% lower than the national average at $50,434 versus $55,322. The Illinois average is $59,196. The wage gap is a very real thing in Chicago. Male median wages are 41% higher than the female wages. 25% of working women in Chicago make $25,000 or less. And that's just sad, no one can live on that. The unemployment rate in Chicago before the pandemic was 56% higher than the national average at 7.3%. The national average was 4.7% and the Illinois average was 5.3%. The poverty level in Chicago is 43% higher than the national average. Chicago's rate is a whopping 21.7%. Illinois is 14% and the national average is 15.1%. Number three. Taxes. Now this is a fun entry. Who doesn't love paying taxes? I'm a kidder, I know. In Illinois, the general sales tax is 23% higher than the national average at 6.25%. That doesn't seem so bad, right? 
but then you have to factor in that Cook County has an additional 1.75% added to it, and the city of Chicago gets their take, they have an additional 1.25%. There's also a tax for the Regional Transport Authority for another 1%. So Chicagoans have an effective sales tax rate of 10.25%, giving it one of the highest tax rates in the country. The Illinois state income tax is 123% higher than the national average at 4.95%. Illinois also recently increased the gas tax to 38 cents, and Chicago was allowed to double theirs as well to 8 cents. So gasoline in Chicago has an average price of $3.42 per gallon, as opposed to the national average of $2.59. And remember how I mentioned that people should use bottled water because of the contamination? and the lead levels, there's a tax that charges an extra five cents for every bottle of water purchased. So that's fun. Then there are the sin taxes. Between the state and city taxes, a pack of cigarettes costs an additional $7.17 per tax. There's also a liquor tax of $27.23 per gallon of liquor. So all of the taxes might make one want to start drinking, but at that cost, who can really afford to? Number two, cost of living. The cost of living in Chicago is 12% higher than the Illinois average and 10% higher than the national average. Transportation costs really get you. That's where a good chunk of money goes. It's 25% higher than the national average. Certain goods and services have a higher price tag too. For example, the typical trip to a salon has a national average of $38.17. But in Chicago, it's $69.77. They must have a lot of celebrity hairstylists or something. I'm not sure what's going on with that. Then if you want to go see a movie, expect to pay an average of $14.86 for the ticket versus the national average of $10.72. I'm curious as to why that is. If anyone knows, leave a comment. Number one, crime. If you listen to politicians talk, you would think that Chicago is a dangerous place and you wouldn't be that far off the mark. Chicago's crime rate is 62% higher than the national average, and the violent crimes are 164% higher. The overall crime rate is 79% higher than the Illinois average. You have a 1 in 24 chance of becoming a victim of a crime in Chicago. And that's with the crime rate going down by 3% from the previous year. There were over 27,000 violent crimes committed during the last year that was reported by the FBI. That includes 563 murders. That equals out to about 1.5 murders every day, or to break it down by weekend, which is when most of the homicides take place, that's almost 11 murders every weekend. Around 60% of the homicides are attributed to street gangs. There are approximately 70 known gangs in Chicago. The silver lining though, is that the city is no longer the murder capital of the nation. That dubious title now belongs to St. Louis. Chicago is actually 10th on the list of the most homicides in the U.S. So good job, Chicago! So those were 10 reasons why Chicago sucks and you shouldn't live there. My takeaway from all the data is that unless you're a single, childless, rich person who can be chauffeured around, living in Chicago might be stressful. I certainly wouldn't attempt it because I don't want to live in a cardboard box and freeze to death. Before I end this, I have a bonus reason not to live in Chicago just for those of you who stuck with me for the whole video. This one is kind of superficial, but here it is. It's the Cubs. Chicago is a losing town when it comes to America's favorite pastime. Until 2016, when they finally broke the longest drought in baseball history, they hadn't won the World Series since 1908. They hadn't even made it to a World Series game since 1945. That is precisely why a good chunk of Illinois roots for the St. Louis Cardinals instead. So if you're a baseball fan, it might be something to consider before moving to Chicago. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please hit the subscribe button and bell icon. My little channel can use all the help it can get. And don't forget to also give it a thumbs up. Until next time, I remain stuck in the Kernfield. field.